Hi everybody, welcome to today's episode of Venta Asks. I am Kevin McEachern, I'm filling in for Caitlin Bullock, and this is Adam Colzetti. Adam, what do we have going on today? Oh, it's a super exciting episode today. We have Mexican Construction on set, and they're gonna to talk to us about literally how they wrote the book on construction. Literally. Okay, let's get rolling. We have a super exciting episode today. We're going to talk construction. We have Sigfrido Pacheco Vega, who is the president of Mexic Construction. And we have Brenda Pacheco Vega, who is the general manager. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so much. So tell us, first of all, tell us about Mexic. What, what do you guys do? Well, we manage construction projects on behalf of owners that don't have that kind of expertise. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's an industrial or a municipal or a public institution or a private developer. Uh, we help them in ways that uh, other people couldn't because we have that kind of expertise that somebody that is running their business day to day doesn't necessarily have. And so in hiring us, they have that opportunity to retain all of our expertise and we help them deliver projects without um, disrupting their business because obviously you know their main focus is their business and so they do not necessarily have that construction experience that we bring to the table and in that in that way we are able to uh, essentially just become part of the client organization and help them represent them uh, and their best interests so that uh, the project gets built according to their specifications right Okay. You know, uh, the best way I, I heard construction described to me is like, the project doesn't want to be built. It fights you the whole way, right? So you essentially need someone to wrestle all those logistics, all those relationship pieces, you know, all the contractors, consultants, like wrangle everybody in. So that's that's the world you, you live in, love to work in. Right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, it's very exciting because when you are initially there, uh, usually there's nothing, you know, if it's a greenfield site. Yeah. And then when you leave, there is something that you leave behind for others to use. Yeah. And to me, that's a very exciting feeling. That's pretty cool, right? You actually get to see the structure of the building or or whatever. It's, yeah. And it's every yeah. kid's dream, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we've been very fortunate in that uh, we have been involved with a lot of different projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes it an, it's an industrial plant. Other times it's just a brand new building like Bankers Court, which I built. Uh, other times it is, uh, you know, a road or new utilities that, you know, are not necessarily seen by the residents, but, you know, they get their water and they get storm sewers and all of that. Okay. So it's interesting, yeah. All right, that's great. So, so Brenda, you guys, you're originally from BC. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. How did you make your way over to Calgary. Yeah, I was on the architecture side of the firm and SIG was on the engineering project management side. And so we first met in Vancouver, we started working together, we did a really successful project at the time. And that was very exciting. Um, I was working for corporate office of the firm we were with. So flying around Canada and the US and, and uh, eventually SIG got work contract in Alberta. So we moved to Alberta and uh, been working together ever since. Yeah, started our own firm. Amazing. Yes, yeah. It was interesting because I landed here from Mexico uh, 21 years ago in January. Yeah. And um, after starting to work for this big engineering firm, which is where I met Brenda, uh, we, well, after working with uh, with this engineering company, I uh, kind of came to realize that there was a lot uh, that most people didn't really know about project management. And so mm -hmm. we saw an opportunity to begin providing that kind of service and, and really come together to help owners that do not necessarily see value in a project manager or ne not necessarily understand how the construction process works. So in that regard, it was really fun for us to move to Alberta from BC uh, after, what, five or six years, something like that, right? And, so. and so it was very interesting. Yeah, well, first of all, Alberta was huge during the boom in 2006, mm -hmm. right? So that's mm -hmm. when uh, we made the, the move over here to Calgary. 
and uh, obviously, you know, with oil developments. And, you know, I was part of a very large project at the time. It was close to $900 million. And it was, yeah, it was interesting because um, you really see a different scale of projects. Mm -hmm. And so once that happens, you sort of cannot unsee it because now you realize that there's a lot more going on than what you initially thought. And so eventually Brenda and I felt that it was important for us to start helping other owners that may not have access to that expertise to uh, to really you know gain access to it. And uh, so that's how we decided to start the firm. Uh, I ended up being, I think, an employer employee for another, um, what, from 2006 to about 2015. So that would have been another nine years. But if I had known how fun it was going to be, I probably would have done it like seven years okay. earlier. So, right. yeah, and, and we've had a wonderful time. It's really enjoyable. And uh, it has the advantage as well that because, you know, we have a home office and, and we have uh, a very flexible schedule, uh, we have an opportunity to balance a lot of uh, uh, family life with uh, uh, work and at the same time, you know, you're always available as well, right? So yeah. it's fun. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's not fantastic. too many people that can work and live together, right? Yeah, yeah right. right. Family, right. everything. So it's multiple sides. We make a good team. Yeah. Yeah. And I've learned a lot from Brenda on, you know, dealing with people and uh, being cheerful and doing all <laughs> kinds of other things that, you know, really help you get along with clients as okay. well. Right. Yeah. Uh, she's been a, a wonderful uh, teammate as well as partner. And uh, it has made a significant difference in how we approach the business, because it's not only about work, it's also about play and about making sure that we have a balanced life as well mm -hmm. so uh that's very difficult obviously because i i have to admit i'm a workaholic so mm -hmm. uh you know it's always good to have brenda too uh, so you kind of pull them back a little bit yeah. and uh hey yeah. we're taking tomorrow off yeah, yeah. some family time yeah. with the kids there you yeah, go that's sure. great well, that's good, good. Yeah, and construction never sleeps but you you quite literally wrote the book on construction management is that correct i did that was an interesting endeavor uh, I, uh, I think it took me about three months to write the first 80% of the book. Yeah. And then it took me another two years to finish the other 20%. <laughs> so it was interesting. But uh, the way that that happened was as I started to develop in my career, uh, around 2013, 2014, I decided that it was time to, you know, commit some of my thoughts to paper because Again, just seeing how many owners were confronted with a situation where, you know, the project manager that they hired wasn't really doing anything for them. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, 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 that's not project management, right? Like these, what we do is we really bring value to the owner and we do help them to identify requirements and we help them to manage the construction team. We help them manage the architect and the engineers and a number of other um, parameters that are not necessarily evident mm -hmm. to the owner when they first start a construction project. And I just decided, okay, it's time to dispel a whole bunch of myths. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure that people really understand that a project manager is, is there not to be just another layer of information between, say, a design consultant or a contractor and the owner, but rather to help the owner make good informed decisions mm -hmm. that really would I would say improve the value of the project and that really created value at the very outset. And so eventually what I did was collect a whole bunch of experience that I that I had. Um, many all of them. Your muses, all your muses. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of, of all the positive things and all the negative things that had happened in my projects and what Brenda calls my muses is I, I had a couple of really good project managers that I worked for and yeah. they, you know, they taught me so much. It was unreal. And eventually we became very, very good friends because, you know, you, you get along with people that think alike, right. right? If you are competent and you focus on providing value, you definitely, you know, capture that in other people and, and you, you know, are aligned. Right. On the other hand, yeah. I also had I love it. <laughs> uh, a couple of project managers that were, you know, 
kind of shady or yeah. I wouldn't say necessarily shady. They were just not not really all that all that great. And mm -hmm. and so a number of things that they were doing, I was like, no, 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 that's not how we do project management. And so mm -hmm. I sometimes would relate some of those experiences that I went through and I would share how not to do things as yeah. well, because it's important to know how to do something and how not to do something as well. And so it was a really, a really interesting combination of experiences and they are all, you know, plastered throughout the book. Uh, but it's also a focus on somebody that doesn't necessarily know a lot about the field, mm. you know, even just teaching them, okay, how do you start a construction project? Who are the right people to get involved? Like, what is the role of the owner? What are you supposed to be doing? How do you hire somebody that's competent? All those kinds of things I thought mm -hmm. were important to start uh, working on. And okay. so, yeah, that's that's all in the book. I love it. And what's the name of the book? It's uh, The Simple Guide to Project Management. How to be an effective project manager in uh, commercial construction. Okay. It doesn't get much more clear than that. Yeah, you had me at Simple Guide. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, if, if I was going to start into it, I'd be looking for that book. I'd be in the right. bookstore and be like, where is it? Let's do what you'd search for, right? Yeah, yeah. So I like how you talked about the myths. So top three myths about construction management. I would say one of them is that uh, things will miraculously fall into place. And, you know, that, right. that it doesn't really take all that much effort. And... Uh, that you can get it all, you know, fast, cheap, and high quality, right. probably all at the same time. And also that um, you sometimes can get by just uh, with no plan. If you, if you, especially if you're an owner that doesn't necessarily have that expertise, it really helps you to hire the right person right at the outset because they will help you create a lot of value mm -hmm. rather than starting you know, haphazardly, and then all of this, and you don't have a lot of value to get from your project. Instead, you're, instead of trying to recover at the very end, if you build the value at the beginning, then all you need to do is just maintain it. And so I think those, those would be, you know, at uh, first glance, the, the three myths that I would say are gotcha. in construction. Yeah. Okay. You, you reminded me of one of my, uh, my favorite sayings, which is hope is not a plan. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, like you get what you pay for. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Big Very time. true. Okay. Well, that is amazing. And I'm super excited because you guys have an endless, seems like, list of stories and about big projects, small projects, doing whatever it takes. And next episode, we're going to get into those. So, in the meantime, if someone needs to get a hold of you guys, want to talk to Mexic about a construction project, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can go to our website. That would be www.mexig.ca, M-E-X-S-I-G.ca. And uh, if that doesn't work for you, uh, or if you're an old fashioned person that likes to pick up the phone and, and give us a call, uh, you can reach us at 587-830-1371 uh, or 587-437-1371. Great, fantastic. Yeah, thank you.